All right, so uh, it's a really hot day here in Sonoma County and I've turned the fan off, so I'm gonna be fairly quick with making this video. I wanted to touch base on how I'm shooting Instax wide film with my speed graphic and my Super D uh, 4x5 cameras. And this method can be used with any 4x5 camera, so it's really, uh, I, I'm digging it. Um, this is actually a Pixar production. If you already have some Instax wide lying around, then you can take an old photograph that you've taken and use it to size out the cuts on your 4x5 sheet of film. So here's one I've already cut. You'll want to make the cuts so that the four corners fit in like that and none of it is covering the exposure. Make note of the film indicating notch and your chemical pod will go on the opposing side from that. So uh, assuming we're looking at the emulsion side of our negative, the indicator is on the top right hand corner and so our chemical pod is going to go on the left side and this will allow you to at any moment shoot in either portrait or landscape orientation. So I took a pin and just made some marks. So you cut along these lines here. Be careful of the surface you're cutting on. I don't care about this table. And boom, you're ready to shoot. So now in the changing bag, we'll open our Instax camera. And I'll usually just leave it open in the changing bag. And what I'm going to do is remove one photograph from the pack. And I'll put this back into the Instax camera. Now that we've got the sheet removed from there, we'll take our four by five film that we cut to accommodate the Instax wide. We'll find the emulsion side here, the indicator at the top. On our Instax, what I use is just the film border on the front side, and I look for that short end. Be cautious not to squeeze this here, because if you squeeze the chemical pod, it'll start to process a shot that hasn't been taken yet. So, we'll load it in with the chemical pod on the left side here. Remember our film indicator notch is the top right. From there we'll take our 4x5 holder, open it on up, and load our Instax sheet all the way in. And now we're ready to expose our Instax wide film. All right, so now you've shot your Instax and we are ready to process. So in our changing bag, we'll go ahead and remove our four by five bit of film. And I'll always pull from the indicator side so I'm not squeezing the chemical pod. We'll open our Instax camera, removing the pack that's existingly in there. And carefully, we'll load the Instax sheet, I'll usually try to get one corner in there and then shift it over like that. It's just easier for me to do it. So I'll get the sheet all the way in, being careful not to squeeze the, the pod at the top. So once it's all the way in and nothing's blocking the top, we'll load it back into our Instax camera, close it up, and I will cover the lens and fire an exposure which processes the shot. Voila! I should make note that the Instax exposes from the back side of the photograph and not the front side of the photograph. Uh, the Polaroid Originals film, uh, Impossible Project, all that stuff, exposes from this front side, but the Instax exposes from the back side. So when you load it in, uh, 
uh, make sure that it is exposing the proper side. If you get a blank shot, that might be what had happened. And it also should be noted that when you load it back into the camera for processing, the chemical pod must be on the top because when it goes to process through the rollers, that needs to be what hits first. If it's going the other way through the rollers, the chemical pod gets broken last and probably spits some chemicals all over the inside of the camera, which is probably not good. Shoot a photograph and see what the crop is after the fact and draw the crop using Sharpie on my ground glass. And this makes sure that your composition every time is consistent. I really like shooting sheet film. It's high resolution and it's just something satisfying about a 4x5 negative. But this shot with the three stop ND filter allows me to shoot FP4 and Ektar 100 and use the same meter setting to get a test shot of the scene which is extremely helpful when I'm shooting strobes out on location shooting sports or anything like that and I don't have a digital camera or even a light meter with me to, to gauge I've been able to take a test shot you know get a good guesstimation of how many stops my flashes were off and from there make the adjustments needed like in this roller skate photo that I'll show here.